everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Crawlers here at good old Vermont Scale Customs. How's everybody doing? I'm fine, thank you for asking. Uh, I just literally unplugged the refrigerator because I'm tired of hearing it uh, start when I'm busy doing these videos right here in my awesome kitchen. So anyway, slow week, worked six days, um, didn't make it out yesterday to do any running uh, footage or anything like that. I was going to try and get out today, but that time change kind of caught me off guard and I only got four and a half hours of sleep last night. So after two and a half hours of drum practice today, I think I'm just going to chill out, do a video, talk about some stuff that showed up this week, show off a, a little experiment that I worked on and uh, talk about the bully two for just a second and uh, call it a video. So anyway, uh, the week began with, uh, I guess I can try and move it in. I got a new soldering station. I'm not gonna try and rearrange everything and show it to you. Uh, I've been running this like uh, Radio Shack 30 watt since, I don't know, like 2005 or something like that. And finally, after all these years, 17 years of running that thing, uh, decided that it just wasn't hot enough. And the reason, I guess, to start off with that, what spawned that was that I bought uh, a radio for the Fly Sky, a Fly Sky radio for the Dementor, and so when these show up, um, you just need to solder your pin connections into the board. Uh, and the soldering I have, the soldering iron that I have, just didn't have a small enough tip to be able to do that kind of detail work. So I felt like I needed to upgrade some stuff, so I did. So that's one thing, I guess, well, technically two things soldering station and a new, new radio for the Dementor. Set that stuff off to the side now. Uh, about, I guess, maybe three weeks or so ago, um, NSDRC put out a post that they were looking to find out if anybody was interested in pre-orders for RS100s, micros, and a couple of other things, I think, but I think it was mainly specifically for these. So since these are so difficult to get your hands on, um, I have one which came actually on a, on a, on a build that I purchased. Um, since I only have one, I feel like it was necessary to get my hands on a second one. I wish I could have really afforded it, a, another one, but whatever. Some other day down the road. Uh, this is also for the Dementor. So the Dementor is going to get a new radio and uh, the NS, uh, excuse me, the RS100. Uh, and I'm probably going to put this horn, I think, on something else. I kind of have a whole theme with that, so I kind of want to keep that consistent. So. This ended up, I think, being, we'll figure out what this one's for. I'm not 100% sure. I might put, some, put this on the Z2 because, excuse me, the Z2 has such a, a horribly long servo horn, which causes the drag link to sit well below the uh, the tie rod itself. So that's something that's, uh, that's probably on the, on the menu for fixing later on. So anyway, that's pretty much all that stuff. Awesome sticker sheet from those guys. So thanks to NSDRC, um, stop by at them. They will absolutely help steer you in the right direction. So uh, give those guys uh, a nod when you're looking to get some stuff for your next build. All right, so that's them. This episode, by the way, is not sponsored by anybody. I'm just kind of giving some shout outs. Um, even though obviously I pay for the product, it's a good product now. So at least talk it up. Um, I found somebody on the Bully 2 page on Facebook who was selling a ton of spare parts for the Bully 2. Um, these are the universal uh, shafts which will replace the CV shafts. Um, apparently the CV shafts are weak according to what every single person says. I have not broken mine yet, but that's also because I haven't spent a single minute out on actual rock doing anything. Couch crawls do not count. Um, so, I mean, I've put the thing under some serious stress and stuff like that by getting a little bound up in some areas, but I guarantee it's not going to put it through what being out in the real world, doing real world stuff will do. And so, um, when the CV shafts break, which is inevitable, uh, in fact, probably even beforehand, I think I'm just going to go ahead and put these in anyway, and then I'll just, I'll, I'll use the CV shaft as, uh, as spares. As well, I've got a replacement front axle showing up and a couple of other parts um, all for a really good price too and the stuff I don't really think uh, actually saw too much runtime these were brand new fresh in the package never even saw a bit of uh, never even got installed so uh, I'm gonna soak these in oil for uh, a couple days and let them kind of 
uh, sort of take on some of that. And there's a tiny little bit of surface rust and some of the nooks and crannies. And so I want to get to that before that turns into an issue at some point down the road. I think these are a little bit older, so. But they are the upgrade that were brand new, just old stock. Um, and last but not least, well, I guess not at least, how about second to last? Because I still want to pull up the bully and talk about that for a second. Uh, I built an experiment out of the Das Hex Z2 carbon fiber chassis. This thing has been sitting on the bench uh, for quite some time and I didn't know exactly what to do with it. Um, I tore down my Defender to get this thing pretty much made. All of the links and stuff, I, I didn't buy anything for this, this was all totally spare parts. Stuff that I pulled right out of the bench and everything else and probably at least the drivetrain uh, and a couple of other things are off of the Defender drive shafts and stuff like that. Uh, it has. It has the original, uh, one of the original RGT motors, and for some, some reason, I'm not exactly sure why, this has a problem with the links running right into the motor on this side, and it always has, and it kind of felt like, I don't know if it was something that they designed this differently, but none of my other uh, motor cans that are this long have the same problem. Uh, I seem to be able to articulate just fine on this, but this has always been a problem ever since I got this stuff over a couple years ago. So um, these are the oldest parts that I have, uh, at least most of the stuff is, I should say. These oldest axles, um, skid and everything. I was running a skid plate on this for a long time, but this all was stuff that was on the Defender, which I have stuff to basically rebuild that again. I just wanted to build um, kind of another, just sort of spare parts just to see if I could sort of comp rig. Um, it has uh, old original ESC in it, uh, Emacs on the front, yeah, racing shocks with uh, SCX24 ball ends on there, uh, high clearance links, which I threw a little bit of offset. And it's also kind of hard to see too, but it really put like this uh, kind of sort of bird's beak, kind of eagle beak sort of thing, kind of hawk <laughs> kind of thing, I guess. I don't know. Looking bend in the front. Um, it actually kind of looks like a weird little like purple frog, but um, this is a roof from a cutting board that uh, really thin little cutting board. It's kind of like a disposable, I guess, or whatever, but I really liked the design and I never used the cutting board. So I thought that would make a perfect roof for a little mini comp rig. Um, it articulates, it's very fun. Um, it's got a lot of heart, you know, it is running an upgraded motor and everything else, steel drive shafts and stuff. So that's old tech, you know. Um, but just a little bit new, newer to frame design and stuff. So just kind of messing around with that, had a little fun and got that completed and just been running it in the, in the course and the inside, indoor, indoor course, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, okay, bully stuff. I thought that I had brought this into spec, but upon looking at it last night, I realized that I still need to do uh, work before uh, it's ready to enter in worlds. I'm one eighth of an inch longer on my wheelbase than what the rules state that you can be. And I thought, I swear that I thought that I had brought this thing within comp spec. So it's gonna be a bit of a challenge now because I'm not exactly sure where I'm gonna pull the extra room from. There was a couple of ideas that I had this morning or later last night that I might try. Uh, one of which would be to move um, the dropouts to the inner positions and then flip the shock locations and also the link locations, which I'm not sure if pulling that out and bringing that axle in closer is gonna shorten everything this way. I can't really do it up here because uh, I don't wanna necessarily decrease how much space I have for tires by running into the front links, the front lower links. And so um, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, like I said, trying to figure out how to shorten this thing by simply just one eighth of an inch. It was easy to do beforehand, losing like almost a quarter of an inch off of it because it was like 12 and three quarters, but now it's like down to 12 and five eighths. So maybe I really only pulled about an eighth of an inch out of it overall. And I thought that I had done much more, um, but I had not. So I need to do some more work. And so with that, um, what else have I done? Not much on this thing. Um, it's kind of sat for a while and now I really need to begin focusing. Now that I've kind of gone through this whole thing with building a ton of uh, 24 scale based comp rigs, I need to get myself and my act together 
and get myself in gear and start focusing on this and get ready for Worlds in September. So um, it's a real deal. I entered the contest and I'm going to follow through with it. And so uh, I need to really start focusing time and energy. Um, I've been reading a bunch of stuff and things like that, watching endless amounts of videos from endless amounts of people that are kind of in and around the community and stuff like that, reading all the posts on Facebook and the group and stuff, and following Sam Sarka and everything that he has to say. Uh, there's a lot ahead of me. It's a very, very steep learning curve um, and obviously just entering simply for the experience itself of just kind of pulling that in because I kind of feel like that's really sort of where I want to be now with the hobby. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be devoting a lot of extra time to, to this aspect of it um, over the course of the summer. So I always do this before I get ready to head out. I'm like, oh, and one more thing. Now I went out with the, uh, uh, the bug last week and did a little bit of an experiment uh, with some onboard camera stuff. So we're rolling the footage as I'm kind of talking about that. So that was a good time. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly what would happen. It rolled uh, a couple of different times, or maybe just once I think it was, but it, I had some problems. Uh, and I'm not really the biggest fan of onboard camera footage anyway. I, it's, it, it's just, it's hard to watch. It's difficult to watch because I don't have the equipment necessary to actually film good onboard camera videos. The stabilization is just awful, uh, if virtually non-existent. And so uh, for me, it's a little difficult to, to tune into. So I just wanted to do a short little experiment of that. So here it is. And with that, let's call this a video and I will see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching and take it easy, everybody.